Hello everyone, it's me, Mr. Sneaker, and today we're gonna be going over Emery's, the main legendary cavalry hero for the Spring Wardens, so stay tuned for everything you're gonna need to know. Hello, yes, we're going over. Emery is the first cavalry hero that you're ever going to be able to obtain in the game. As you can see, I've got about 52111. We're going to go over how good he is, even at 5111, and everything you're going to need to know pairings, talents, the artifact choice, and obviously the skills. So if you enjoy my videos, guys, smash like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more daily Call of Dragons videos. And with all that said, let's get into it. So yeah, when we look at Emery's right now, Emery's is the first ever gold key commander that was basically for cavalry in the game. Later on, they introduced Bakshi, which is a wheel commander, so it's a little bit harder to obtain, but Emery's you're always going to have access to, and he's a very, very great and phenomenal hero to have. For a free to play player and a low spender, especially Wales too, he's so good to use as a cav match currently in the game. So when we look over his skills, his skills are insane. He has the highest 15 damage single target nuke in the game. So he's already giving you the right notice what you want. He's about damage, guys. He's all about that damage. And when we go into the second skill, he increases his rage accumulation speed by 40% by gaining a buff called Passion. Very, very powerful effect. It, go, it can be triggered every 30 seconds, as you can see on the little blurb here. But now when we look at the last two skills, we get a 10% in attack bonus, which is very key in order for this skill to hit even harder, as well as that 3% Cav March speed bonus in order for us to close down those targets. Obviously, when we level him up, we're gaining 30% attack and 10% March speed, so it's overall 40% worth of stats. Really, really good when we do get eventually that 30% attack. Again, we're going to be hitting triple the amount almost of what we're currently hitting on the extra damage buff so you gotta think we're going 10 20 30 that's almost a three times increase of stats on this skill so when we do finish up on the fourth skill this is which is really cool which i really do enjoy about him is all damage dealt by emory's legion is increased by 10 percent when you max him out at level one it is at four percent very very powerful still four percent extra damage that you deal to everything that you have in your kit and also emery's legion deals an extra five percent up to a maximum of 15 extra skill damage when he targets a unit that's currently being surrounded so if you see a cavalry unit hitting a car you know an archer and then you hit them as well you will now gain that 15 percent skill damage bonus meaning again this skill is going to hit even harder right so as you can see his skills are all about nuking down the target you could definitely call him the khan of the game but he has a little bit more to him when we look at his talent sheets which we will go over soon but when we come to the pairings, these pairings are very simple. We don't have that much to work with in the game. But the obvious choice for free-to-play players is an Emery's and Alistair March. The reason is, when you do have Alistair, Alistair has an actual 600 AoE damage factor, allowing your now deputy to fire off this skill really fast with the Cavalry Unyielding Rush skill, if you guys remember, if you've not checked out the video yet. It does grant you 1,000 skill um, skill costs, so this skill rage cost here, you gain 1,000 of it if you do get, uh, attack a ranged unit. So if we look quickly at the unit here, just so you know what we're talking about, Unyielding Rush, whenever you're approaching a target, Legion, that's a ranged Legion, you gained 1,000 Rage, right? So this is very powerful when we look at Emery's and then the Deputy, because the Deputy is now going to be firing off this skill, and when we look at Alistair, he's hitting two nearby targets really quickly with 600 damage. This is a nice buff for the recovery match, nice health bonus and attack. This one is to do with rallying, so you don't really use it in the open field. But the last one, again, is Rage Accumulation Speed and Counter Attack Damage Bonus, right? So when you look at the four skills, they're really great and work together. But when you do finally expertise Emery's, his 
final skill says, when attacked, he does have a 20% chance to gain passion again. But whenever he already has passion, he instantly removes it and grants himself 100 rage. So that means his rage generation is off the charts. You're going to be able to hit him instantly for this damage factor. And then if you gain passion and then passion again through someone like Alistair now, you're going to gain 100 rage and jump up and fire off even quicker than your opponent again to finish him off even faster. Another considerable pairing that you can run is Elena, Elena or Eleanor. It's one of the two. But Elena is a really good commander to run with most marches and the reason why is she gives you some decent skill ones it's, it's a nice little bit of shielding and damage it's nothing to worry about really but the reason why she is really good is when we look at her skill 3 skill 4 and awaken skill so she makes it so you take 30% less normal attack damage so that is amazing for a cavalry march because cavalry are always going to be running at someone so they're going to be taking a bunch of normal attack damage so this is reducing that you also gain a 30% defense buff when you cast your rage skill. So remember when we have that Emery's primer and we're rocking cavalry and we hit them instantly with that 1500, we're also gaining an instant 30% defense bonus with Elena. And then whenever we grant ourselves a shield, we're having a 70% chance to heal, giving ourselves a little bit of survivability on our Emery's. And then finally, and this is the final choice and everyone would be knowing this is Bakshi. Bakshi is a phenomenal hero at 5111 with your Emery's. He does again a bunch of damage, increases the health, gives you some more peacekeeping that we don't really worry about. But again, health bonus and attack bonus, really good bonuses here for the match. And finally, you get rage accumulation speed again for the Emery's. You also gain healing factor and a 10% hour defense bonus. And this is a dice roll, guys. If you don't know what he does, we're going to be covering Bakshi. Don't you worry. I am going to have a full guide on him. But today, we are going to be covering the boy wonder Emery's. So that is all the skills and pairings so far covered. I hope you enjoyed it so far. And now we're going to go over the artifacts. So the cool thing with the artifacts with cavalry, and especially cavalry being the fastest unit in the game, you can actually use stuff like Boots of Swiftness a lot, and this actually is used to gain runes. So if you're going to try and gain a rune before you fight a behemoth, really good artifact to whack on. Just that extra little bit of march speed is fine. You don't really need to invest into it at all. It's just, just a nice little bit of extra, right? And you can activate the skill to gain an extra 30%. But... Aside that, we're going to go down here because down here is actually some of the best choices for cavalry and I don't have them. So the first and the best, in my opinion, the best in slot for PvP currently is the Wolf Woman of Halo. This is an insane artifact right now. You gain a range factor of 15 which allows your cavalry units to blink to a target location so when you immediately teleport to that location it's there and once you cast your skill as you can see here you will now recall back to that area and you have a 15 second timer to do this but as we know cavalry already instantly go so you're able to teleport to an area cast your skill and teleport back and get some free damage off and then you're able to run at them again and hopefully, after 10 or 12 seconds has passed, hopefully you get that second unyielding rush and get another skill damage rush of 1000, right? As well, Storm Arrows, again, an insane uh, artifact for the same reason. You're able to use this to blink to the target and in instantly gain a 12 damage bonus or 12% damage increase bonus on your march meaning that skill one again if you're targeting an archer or a mage unit is going to take insane amounts of damage and kill them even quicker you can do also another artifact here which is spring bird feather again really good for movement speed if you're looking for a movement speed artifact but now when we look at epics, you have a really good choice. You actually can run Centaur's Boat, which actually gives your match AoE, and it also is a ranged artifact. So if you're looking to use a artifact with the Spring Warden Cavalry, 
This is a perfect artifact for you, especially for free to play players. You can use this all the time. As you can see, you get a 1500 damage factor, AoE effect, hits up to three targets, no questions asked, quite nutty for a cavalry player, right? When we go up though, I wouldn't recommend Blade of Reproach. This is only for peacekeeping. You only need it level one and it's good to go. But now when we look up, you also have Solon's Blade. And for me, there's an argument between Solon's Blade and Kingslayer. I believe Kingslayer is for whales and you should avoid it if you're a normal free to play or low spender. But Solan's Blade is a better artifact because it does in do an insane amount of stats. So you do a massive amount of damage, 3200. You also gain a 20% march speed bonus when you activate it. And obviously it has 25% less damage when you hit multiple targets like anything else in the game. But you gain unit attack and that march speed and it's so good in the open field to run. Here is the little blurb on field, just so you can see what it does. Great animation, everyone loves using it. So that is my recommendations for Emery's. The number one pick so far for me is always going to be the Sword Oath. I do enjoy Sword Oath um, on Solan's Blade or the Wolf Woman of Halo. You're good to go with any of those two for the legendaries. You're going to have a lot of fun and obviously Storm Arrows, right? So the best three, easy to go to. So now that's the skills, artifacts and pairings out of the way. So let's get into the nitty and gritty, the hard part, and that is the talent pages. So if you enjoyed the video so far, guys, smash the like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I am Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator, here to bring you guys daily Call of Dragons videos, guides, event guides, commentary on Battlefield, everything you want. Call of Dragons related, I've got it. So. I hope you keep supporting the channel, but with all that said, let's move on to the talent pages. Here we are, the talent, that's the big boy part. Everyone strap down, get your popcorn ready, and here we go. We're going straight in with di deep diving into Emery's talents. The best talents, in my opinion, for you to go to. So again, foundation talents, always the same as all my videos, and then you unlock your balanced heart, which gives you a nice 1% attack and 5% march speed, really good. So for me, the best tree, and it's a really funky one that you can roll with, and there's a lot of options in here, and we're going to go over it, is the Cavalry Tree. The reason why is the Cavalry Tree grants you the most amount of damage and benefits for the march in the open field. And afterwards, we'll be going into the PvP tree, and I'll explain why once we go down there. And we do have a fur tree for mobility, but we'll stay, you know, we'll keep them all separate. So... Let's look into the tree. So when you look at the cavalry tree here, you obviously have to take the march speed, but you get three choices. And I like all three. This is a really good thing to note for you guys. And this is, don't worry if you haven't got the same talents. So this one is an, a phenomenal talent for cavalry. It means you can take more damage. And the thing is with cavalry, you got to remember, you need to close the distance. So when you're trying to kill archers and you're trying to kill mage units in the open field, you are going to be taking damage before you hit them. So you're going to try and almost be a semi-tank and you're going to try and take a, a, as much damage you, do, you, know, you don't need before you hit them with the big boy bops. And that's what this build will do. So this is a 4% less hero skill damage taken for your march. Here you can, obviously, if you want to be a bit more greedy and just go for raw damage, this is the one you want to go for. I would not take Adrenaline Rush. Adrenaline Rush is a little bit of a waste of talent. You can go for it to get increased white damage, but for me, the overall attack or egoism are the two best talents. Either one you go for, just five out of five, and then you unlock the next tree. We already have a ton of of rage accumulation speed so we don't actually need too much more so we can skip high spirits here and you have the choice again to go for all conquering which again means you're taking less normal attack damage which is really effective against archer units but i went for more skill damage because i was a little bit greedy here i've taken the skill damage that people are going to hit me with archers and mages alike i'm going to you know mitigate them which is really good so here is four percent extra skill damage so now when i get to you you're going to feel the pain right 
and now they're perfect for us and this is what makes the build for me the perfect build whenever you are legion gains a synergy when it enters battle which you always do because you instantly hit fire you increase your hero skill damage by 15 percent so because you increase your hero skill damage by 15 percent you're gonna gain at 1k rage instantly and you're going to hit them really hard, right? So as you can see, there's a load of synergy within the build of the talents and the skills that I've already gone over um, with Emery's. When you move into the final tree here, there's a load of things you can go up for. And I've been experimenting with a lot. So far, I've actually enjoyed going for the 5% extra damage to marksman units. I want to be able to blow them up as fast as possible and get out. But you can also go for taking uh, less counter attack damage or the increase of attack if you really, really want to go all in. This is the all in build. You reduce your defense, but you get a massive, you get double the amount of attack for reducing it. So it is a very all in talent. But for me, I really enjoy maximum counter attacks. It's a really powerful effect. 5% when you're hitting maximum and they don't realize that you get, they're getting hit. And then you get into this section. And this is where things get a bit funky. But for me, I did make the hard decision and choose to gain haste. So the reason I chose haste is every single time I end a battle, so every time I kill someone and I'm trying to escape now, I'm gaining that 20% march speed for 10 seconds so i can escape with taking the least amount of damage as possible because obviously i don't want to be slowed i don't want to be taking you know multiple hits for a long period of time so gaining march speed here is very important and with that in note we also gain 200 healing factor when we end battle so this is a nice combination we have of talent see that work together you could also go for the increased amount of attack here and whenever you kill the enemy unit you reduce their timer so it means well you increase their timer should i say so it takes them even longer to get home and refresh that match a very powerful effect you can run i wouldn't blame you i don't really want to use this again because i want to try and maintain as high with my cavalry units compared to anyone else and with the final choice i chose blood mark increase amount of damage you deal with that instant choice of 1000 rage skill factor bonus it's insane that you get blood mark the fact that you hit him with 1500 damage alistair hit some of that 600 damage and now you get that extra 150 damage there's so much skill damage that you hit them with on turn one that you're able to do so this is the reason why i really enjoy this build but now as you can see i've got two talents left and i would be putting them in the pvp realm why and this is why. So when we go into the PvP tree, it's a bit of a crazy one. And what I do is put five points here, one point here, and four points here. The reason is you want a little bit of defense, but the extra one point in march speed for me as a cavalry player so far that I've noticed allows you to get in and out of combat again, taking less damage when you don't need to, right? So it's all about march speed, as you know. It's march speed and, and damage. This is what you want to be dealing with cavalry at the moment in the meta. Here, you would be going for overall health, increasing again the amount of health you have so you can take more damage, you can get to them. And again, whenever your Legion launches a counter attack damage, you reduce all damage taken by 1%. And with your final point, I would put it in March Speed again. So you have obviously all that March Speed and defensive stats with this Cavalry Tree. But as we're going on with the PvP Tree, we're going to finish it up. We do finish all five points in March speed. We want to be able to get in and out of combat. Like I said, said in the Cav tree, we want to be doing the exact same thing. Instead, now we can go for 1.5% more damage. And this is, again, the final talent choice for you. If you are com comfortable and confident in your cavalry mechanics and you're able to keep your marchers healthy when they are less than 50%, you can go for this. This is 3% more damage, which is insane. But if you feel like you want to stay again, anytime you defeat an enemy, you're able to gain that 300 skill factor and to finish it off gaining that health like always as you've seen in most of my guides is king when you're in pvp and when you're in the pvp tree you would be doing the same thing you would be going down into the cavalry tree copying the beginning here 
which I've already gone over, right? So now we're going to go over the final tree, and this is a very specific tree. It's the mobility tree. And the only time you want to be using this tree that I've found out so far is when you want to be trying to farm kill, right? So when you're trying to get behind enemy lines, and then when you're trying to go for those big, big kills, this tree is really good for doing it. The reason is you gain a mass amount of march speed, you also take less counter attack damage and deal a bunch of counter attack damage back. So no matter what you're fighting, you're going to be killing it, which is really good. Then we get obviously that little bit of extra march speed to finish it off. Then with swift moving ears, whenever we leave a building or resource point, and every single time you do kill a farm tile, guys, you enter that tile. When you go and leave it, you're now gaining that extra vigor and that extra march speed every single time you're leaving. So you can now tile hop really efficiently and get to target to target and kill them really fast. And with all that said, we're going to have 4% extra skill damage. We're finishing it off taking less skill damage from the march that we're killing on the farm tile. Every time we obviously take skill damage, we're increasing our march speed. And we finish it up with victory rush. Whenever we launch a normal attack with a target lower than 50%, we have a 10% chance, uh, or we have a chance, shall I say, to deal 250 damage factor for 10 seconds uh, more well, every 10 seconds right so this is a really good effect it means you're going to be able to go to the farm tile hit them start killing them when they hit 50 percent, it hits them really hard again with maybe a skill one behind it afterwards and then when you kill them you're going to gain this mass amount of extra march speed with these two swift maneuvers and march speed you have and you're going to be able to escape or find the next target to kill so this mobility tree here is only for farming in a farm well farming merits with farm killing so remember that you don't want to use this in the open field really once you do have this i would again go down this tree and actually go in all the damage and rage generation and perfect ferocity this is the way you would want to finish this mobility tree but again, I, I don't really enjoy using it. For me so far, this tree has been really good. This has been the best tree that I've used so far. And the second best tree that I've been testing has been this PvP tree. So I'd like to see what your thoughts are in all of these talent trees. You know, test them out yourselves each season. Just remember, you can swap them around and change them up each season since you get to reset so you get to test and go say season one you tried the cav tree it was okay you try season two and you did way better with the pvp tree so then season three you're going to stick with the pvp one right so that's how i would do it for you guys but that is the talents for emery's so everything is now covered guys i hope you enjoyed the video that is everything you need to know with emery's that is your pairings skills talent trees and artifacts combos with the bane boy remember you can obtain him through gold keys or obviously the daily bundles as well as well as the strongest lord events so there's a number of ways of obtaining him so i hope you enjoyed the video smash a like comment and subscribe to the channel what you and then tell me what you think to this guide obviously i want to improve and make it as better and more beginner friendly as i can throughout you know the, the channel's life cycle so i hope you enjoyed it until next time stay safe stay seeky and peace out